What is up everybody? So in this tutorial I'm going to focus exclusively on chain of command and officers and how that impacts your overall army. I'm not going to talk about anything else in this video. So you basically have, um, so I'm going to talk about chain of command, how that affects your army, um, how to select the commanders and how to train them up in your army as you go through the campaign. And then finally we're going to talk about core commanders and their particular traits because they are a bit unique and different than your division and your brigade level commanders. So first we're going to talk about brigade commanders and then I'll kind of kind of work my way up here. So brigade commanders, what they do is they give you really kind of two bonuses. They give you bonuses to command and then bonuses to your um, your efficiency. All right, And then they also can give you some perks to your morale. But what do I mean by that? So if you check out Brown here, he's a, he's a 06, he's a colonel. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with rank, you got captain, major, lieutenant colonel, colonel, brigadier general, major general, which is your two star, and then lieutenant general, which is your three star. Um, colonels contribute to your command bonus and then also to your efficiency. Uh, well, all ranks do, but it's different. Okay, so a captain, like for example, down here at Pew, captains contribute zero points to your command points overall. Right, so this 28 is coming exclusively from your division commander, which I'll explain in a moment. Uh, a major is going to give you 10 points. So as you can see here, it's uh, 36. So that means man Maney should be about 46, right? Yep, pretty close. Um, again, it's not 46, it's a little bit higher because as they gain more experience, they also contribute even more command points. But then it, it goes up by a factor of 10. So it's 0 here, 10 more here. This would be 30, or rather 20. For lieutenant colonel 30 and then uh, a one star is 40 command points and then a two star is 50 command points division commanders give half of what they would normally give to a brigade command so your one star here that might give uh, 40 command points if he's in command of a division then he's going to give 20 command points same thing for your two star so a two star would give normally 50 to your division or rather to your brigade if he's in com command of a division he's going to give 25 and that's where you get this number from. So, Colonel gives 30 command points to a brigade. So that's 30. And then you get roughly 25 from your division commander because he is a two star. Normally he would give 50, but because his division command it cuts it in half, he only gives about 25. And that's where you get this number from. Now, it's not exactly 55 because both your Colonel has a little bit of experience and your two star has some experience which means they're going to give a little bit more than what they would give at the very zero level of no experience whatsoever. All right, so that's the first thing to know with regards to commanders is that they contribute to your command penalty, your command points. And if you don't have high enough command points to field that particular unit, you're going to suffer an efficiency, which is a big deal because it means that your reload time and your accuracy rates are going to be drastically reduced, like down here. See how it's in the red? You don't want that. Here it's telling you, hey, by the way, your officer's rank is a little too low for this. So you're going to suffer some consequence, but not like a major um, consequence for this. But for down here, you will because it's in the red. So it's, it's not going to be nearly as effective because you just don't have enough command points here to field this particular uh, unit. So as a, as a matter of eyeballing it, how do you figure this out? How do you figure out what ranks should go where? Well, as a matter of thumb, a 2,500 unit brigade is going to require a one star to field that particular division or that that, that particular brigade. Okay, um, if you have anything less than a one star, you're going to suffer a little bit of a penalty. Like for example, we have a full bird colonel here. It's telling us our efficiency is not high enough because we have 2,500 troops for here. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a one star. So what would you do in that circumstance? Well, you're probably going to take this one star here and replace them and say, hey, you know what, um, we're going to put you here and then take Corcoran's Legion and put the colonel there. So now you have this 1600 man brigade run by a colonel and now all of a sudden we're good on efficiency and you have this 2500 man brigade ran by a one star and all of a sudden you're good on efficiency. So that's the first rule of thumb is just be aware that the number of, of troops in a particular unit is going to drive the size of uh, the, basically the rank of that particular uh, officer overseeing that particular brigade. I'm um, just going to put a button in it here. Um, 2,500 man is going to be a one star. Uh, you could basically get away with a 2,000 man with a full bird and then um, a 
five, so a 1,500-man brigade is going to probably be about a lieutenant colonel to a major, all right? So, again, 2,500, one star, 2,000 colonel, and then 1,500 is going to be between a lieutenant colonel and a major. Uh, as a fur further matter of illustration, just to kind of show you how command penalties work, or command points work, as you can see here, we have 36 uh, command points. The major, he only gives you 10 command points for this brigade, and the rest of it's coming from your division commander. However, lieutenant colonel gives you 20, and as you can see, it went up. So, All right, so that's your, your brigades. That's how the ranks work. Um, again, probably not going to be really, really using captains except for artillery. And I would encourage you to use captains for artillery because... Um, as your officers rank up, they become, become more expensive to hire. So if you go in your barracks, you're going to notice captains are really cheap. But then you go up to major, which is one rank higher, and it doubles in cost. Um, I say doubles because if you look at your lowest experienced captain, he's 300. You look at your lowest experienced major, he's 600. And it goes up exponentially from there. So your lieutenant colonel is going to be 1,700, which is considerably more than you want know, captain, and then your full birds. So what you're going to want to do is you want to take these captains, buy them, or I guess hire, them, and then put them in command of smaller units, get them experience so that they can eventually make rank, make major, and then put them in charge of brigades, and eventually get those guys ranked up um, so that you're not spending money on officers. You're, you're training them up. Now your your core commanders, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment, um, don't contribute to your command penalty or your command points. I don't know why I keep wanting to say command penalty. Um, it's only your division and your brigades. Uh, your core commanders provide a different function, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, just know that your command points and your efficiency are going to be directly dictated by your brigades and your divisions. All right, let me see here. What else do I want to talk to you? Division commanders. Okay, so besides the fact that they give you half the command points you need to field a particular army or uh, force, what else do division commanders do? Well, if, say, Cochrane's Legion here, say you go into battle and um, the, say, Brown here is either killed or wounded, well, he's no longer leading this brigade, and as a consequence, your command points are going to drop precipitously, and they may drop below the point necessary for you to be able to effectuate 100% efficiency. What I mean by that is 1,600 men probably require around 50 command points, maybe 40, to field a full, you know, full efficiency um, brigade. Well, if you still have 1,600 troops, but your brigade commander gets killed or wounded, you're going to lose from here. You're going to lose 30 command points. You're going to be down. You're going to be down to 28. But chances are this, this brigade is not going to be very effective anymore for that particular battle. Well, what you can do is you can merge this brigade with another brigade so long as it doesn't exceed 2,500. And the division commander will take over the lead for that particular brigade. So Wilcox will take over for that. So that's another advantage to having a, a decent division commander is not only does, does, does he spread out his you know 50% command points among all of his brigades, but he can also take over command of a brigade in the event that a brigade commander is killed or wounded. Um, see a later tutorial where I can show you how to merge brigades um, and how to do it in the most effective way possible. Just know for now that, that division commanders um, provide you know kind of a twofold um, applicability to your core. One, giving you the 50% command points, but also two, taking over for, for a brigade that is wounded or killed um, so long as you merge, merge them with another Brigade. All right, so um, I did talk about it briefly, but I want to go over it in, in more detail in terms of how to promote up your officers. Again, you know, if you can um, purchase for you know hire more captains and then put them in charge of artillery and train them up, so you can eventually get them up into line officer spots for your officers. Um, the reason is that you cannot, um, short of going up to the, the reputation tab here and hiring, uh, hire uh, one star or above. All right. So uh, if you look in the barracks, 
We can get captains. We can get all the way up to one star. Sorry, I must say two star. One stars. But you can't get any higher than that. So you have to train up one stars to two star level. And then two stars to three star level. Um, one stars, though, are very expensive. As you can see down here, they are 4000 a pop. So, that, I mean, that's a lot of money. You think about it, we have like 2300 here. <clears throat> so, um, the, base, the best way to do it is just to train up your officers through experience. And the the best way to do that to, for the entirety of your army is to take the, the lower ranking officers, put them in positions where they can get experience, promote them up, and then move them up as you go. Um, now, there's another reason here, too, to start off with having your lowest ranking officers for your brigades is that when you hire officers, obviously their their price is exponentially higher. But also, because they're more expensive and more difficult to get, your two stars, for example, if they're in, in charge of a brigade, yes, they will give your brigade more experience. Because again, officers give your brigades experience, morale, and command points, which directly affects their efficiency. So a two-star, by nature of being in command of, say, Warren here, is going to give this brigade more experience than a major will. However, two-stars you can only get through your reputation points or training up from one-star to two-star, so they're already more difficult. One-stars are very expensive to hire. And so it just makes sense that you want to have your lower-ranking officers at brigade level and just do the chain of command that way, rather than perhaps having your division led by a one-star and then having a division full of, you know, colonels and below, um, and just kind of having your, you know, two stars, I guess, maybe leading divisions or whatever you want, or leading brigades or whatever you want to do, because of the cost-benefit analysis and the fact that leading a brigade is a very dangerous business. You're going to have a lot of officers killed or wounded leading your brigades. And so you want to treat these guys like they're just very, very unique, um, hard-to-come-by commodities. Now, granted, as a division commander, they can still be killed or wounded if they join a brigade that's been merged and lead it, but it's far less likely to happen um, as opposed to actually leading the, the brigade. Okay, a couple more points here before I jump over to core commanders. Um, I already mentioned using captains to lead artillery brigades. And then perhaps like smaller um, regiments, like if this was a 250 regiment, you could probably get away with a captain doing that to get him some experience. For your rookie brigades, you're going to want to probably put like a major. It's so like reins. You'd probably rather have a major doing this um, as opposed to your one star because your one stars are going to be more better for, or I don't know if more better is the correct phraseology, probably um, just better uh, for your like two and your three stars. Okay. Until you have just like way too much leadership and you, you feel like you have to. You've got all these like one stars and two stars sitting around, but in the meantime, um, it'd be better to instead of having this one star uh, Warren here, led by a major, you flip this and put the major down in, in, in charge of reins, and then have this one star here in charge of this um, one star unit. I mean, obviously too, because this is a one thousand man unit, so the major is going to have more, going to more appropriately fit this number of men, but also to um, you want the more experienced officers leading the more experienced brigades. Sorry, just give me a moment here. I'm looking at uh, my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything. I do note that your stars can technically command cores. All you need is a star to be a core commander. It still makes sense to have two and three stars in, term, in charge of your cores um, because, again, it's harder to get two stars than it, you know, the ones you can at least buy them. You can't buy two stars. And three stars are very hard to come by because they take a lot of experience to, to get up to that three star level. And you don't want to put your three star in a posi position to get killed. Um, your core commanders are the ones you see on the battlefield. And the catch is, which is kind of interesting, they can be shot at. And they'll kind of flee away from the shooting, but they can't be killed. They're literally immune. So if you have your three-star in charge of a core and you have them on the battlefield, um, I don't believe there's a way to kill them. Uh, my understanding is you could put like your entire army at a core commander and 
I think perhaps the most you can do is get them to flee the battlefield, but they're not going to die. So, um, I would say, however, that if you take your three star and you put him in charge of a division or a brigade, he can be killed that way. So just be aware that if he's not leading a core, he's leading a division or brigade, he can be killed. All right. Um, I would say it's it's better um, for command promotion to hire new colonels and lieutenant colonels to replace your dead ones uh, rather than simply just pulling them from the reserve. The reason I say that is the hiring barracks resets after, after every conflict, after every um, campaign. So, for example, here, Chancellorsville. After we finished this campa campaign and we moved on to the Gettysburg campaign, then the, the number of colonels in the barracks here and lieutenant colonels is going to reset. So it would make more sense to hire all these guys out, put them in my reserve, because then come Gettysburg, this can be reset, and there's going to be more lieutenant colonels and colonels available. It's a good way to kind of stay ahead of the ball, so that if you have a very high casualty rate with regards to your officers, you already have a very high, robust reserve pool to, to pull from. Um, just, again, remember, you can't hire major generals and... You know, brigadier generals tend to be you know very limited in terms of what you can hire. So it's very different than colonels and lieutenant colonels, which can constantly are replenished per um, new phase of the overall campaign. And it's a good way to kind of promote up new stars, star generals, you know, brigadiers and, and major generals and so forth. So keep that in mind. Um, your corps commanders are the ones which, well, let me go back to division commanders real quick before I jump into corps. If if you have a division that that's kind of or a brigade that loses their their officer, the reason it's very important I think to merge them in with another brigade so you can get your division commander to take over, is it decreases the likelihood that they're going to shatter and and leave the battlefield altogether. Uh, as soon as an officer is killed or wounded, the brigade is incredibly deficient in its ability not only to inflict casualties but its ability to stay on the battlefield. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Officers contribute to the morale of a brigade, and if it doesn't have an officer leading it, the morale is going to plummet very quickly. So, rule of thumb, if you lose an officer in battle, try and find another brigade to merge them with so that you can basically get your division commander to take over. Um, or put them at the rear of the you know your, your battle and, and try and have them not engaged any further. Okay, so transitioning over to core command here, a um, little bit different between your division and your brigade commanders in the sense that core commanders actually provide officer uh, bonuses to the, the core as a whole. Um, if you look at the 13th Massachusetts, for example, these are brigade-specific bonuses, the marksman training and the discipline training. If we were to replace Gruft with somebody else, like um, Crocker, that still stays there, right? Uh as opposed to the actual core command, that will change. So I took this two star and we took a three star here. Notice that it's officer specific in terms of the bonuses that are provided to the core, which I'll, I'll go over this in a moment. So how does this work? Um, every star gets one bonus to the core. So first, second, and third core right now are led by three star um, lieutenant generals. And therefore you have three bonuses that are uh, applicable to the core. Um, but if we were to take McClellan and replace him with a, know, let's, let's take a two star. Up him. Okay, two star. Yes, sir. We get basically because he has two stars, he's going to apply two bonuses to the core. What are those um, particular bonuses that you can choose from for the core? All right, so the first is you're going to have either uh, strategy, which gives you plus 20 ammo, um, which can be pretty helpful. It's a passive, so it's not something you're going to have to actively keep track of on the battlefield. It just naturally happens to your third core. Uh, every unit's going to have 20 plus percent ammo. Or um, speed of 5%, so movement speed, uh, again, a passive. And then finally, uh, trainer, again, passive, plus 10% experience to all units within that third core. Um, I would say for purposes of figuring out what to do. Okay, so for logistics, this is actually really helpful for the first, um, where was logistics? This one, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, strategy, logistics, whatever. Uh, it's going to be really important for the first core that takes the battlefield. So you're, you're kind of your vanguard. So for example, if Protoboro, the first core, um, or I-Core, 
is the first core that always engages in the battlefield. You're probably going to want him to have that plus 20 ammo because he's going to be the ones on the battlefield the longest, right? Um, so that can actually be pretty helpful to have if your I core is your um, your primary core that you're engaging on the grand battles, the major battles. Uh, tactics is also very helpful, right? Uh, da -da -da, where you at? Tactics. Um, but kind of more for the the the, the core that's coming on to, to reinforce the, the your main core, right? Um, so your reinforcing core. So say the third core is reinforcing the first core. Might be actually helpful to have this one because they're going to get up to the front lines much quicker uh, than perhaps they would otherwise. Um, infantry brigades tend to move relatively slow in this game, uh, especially if they're not on roads or open fields. So this 5% could actually make a big difference. Um, and then 10%, uh, it's useful, um, but not in the ways you, you'd expect. Um, so it's going to be useful for training lots of brigades in the long term obviously, because it's 10%. Um, uh, specifically, once you get to about Fredericksburg or so, you um, do tend to kind of stop training new brigades because you've kind of filled out your army, and now you're just kind of replenishing what you already have. Um, but the 10% uh, will reduce the number of veterans you need to add to brigades, right? So your rookies are being trained up into veterans because you have this 10% uh, bonus right here. And um, thus, long term, it's very advantageous. Just short term, it may not you may not see the the benefits of it. So again, just kind of be aware. You kind of think of okay, how do I want my my three core to operate amongst one another? How am I going to use them? And then maybe you know that that might influence how you go about doing it. Um, if you look at the way I did it here, again, this is old game. Don't don't really pay much attention to it. But McClellan, uh, he is the you know he's got training. All three of these guys have training. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do that, right? So I'll go back to Williams. All right, so say he's going to be a reinforcer, right? He's going to reinforce my first course of good tactics. Now, Major General, so two stars. So we get another um, options here. You got artillery, so firearms five, accuracy five, and the reload time, negative five. Uh, infantry, five melee, five firearm, then five, negative five, reload time. And then finally, cavalry, melee five, firearms five. Charge damage, five. First and foremost, I'd say cavalry is probably worthless at the core level. The reason I say that is, what are the likelihood you're going to have enough cavalry in your core that this is going to benefit um, you know, that core over everything else that you have in your core? Uh, so you have three units of cavalry, but you have like 15 brigades of infantry and you know, slash you know, artillery batteries. You're, you're only benefiting three or four of those units in that entire core. So chances are you're going to go with either infantry or artillery. And I think a case can be made for the artillery, especially if you're Union and you want to kind of overwhelm the enemy with artillery barrage or, you know, artillery presence. This could be advantageous. Uh, chances are you're going to go with infantry, though, because, again, infantry is going to make up the bulk of your core, regardless of whether you're Union or Confederacy. Um, but just bear, bear in mind, there is an argument to be made for the artillery. Uh, and then finally, um, with the, the last and final piece, whoops, I'm going to show, grab somebody new, because I went through that. Sorry about that. That broke. That's what I meant to click. Okay, so we went with, um, uh, duh, 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 so tactics, and then we went there. Now you get uh, three stars. So you get leader. So command radius is increased with morale resistance, which I'll tell you in a moment what that means. Um, you have attacker, which is speed attack and stamina, and then you have defender, cover 10, and melee 5. By the way, the melee bonuses are actually pretty important because um, it can be it can tend to be difficult for you to get melee bonuses um, through other means. And so if you're looking at your units and you're not really getting a lot of bonuses to your actual brigades in terms of melee, maybe the way to do it is through a core bonus, just kind of something to keep in mind. But so first, um, defender uh, trait is actually really useful. So let me go over that one first. Where are you at? Um, okay, so defender is really useful. It's an excellent option for the core that's going to be defend, uh, you know, kind of deployed in defensive battles. But also, it's great for offensive as well, because the melee and the cover buff can really help when you send units, as, uh, you know, fortifications. So bear in mind that this can be really helpful, uh, even on the offensive side of things. Don't let the the word defender kind of um, you know, trick you. Just bear in mind that you're going to have to have your core commander, you know, in this case, uh, it would be um, McClellan, close enough, kind of within that sphere, that, that circular, round circular uh, thing, 
because uh, it's an active uh, thing to, to get that bonus. So active means it's specific to that circular ring you're going to see on the battlefield for that core commander. Um, it's not going to be something that's just automatically applied to the entire core, unlike your um, you know infantry here or these, because these are our specialization slash passives. All right. Um, attacker. So that's the, the next one over here. Uh, it's not as useful, I think, as the, the defender because, you know, speed's only to units within the aura. Again, it's not a passive ability, it's an active ability. So your entire core is not going to get this bonus, just the people that are nearest your, your general within the circle, circles. Um, and, and I also think, too, like, it seems to me most of the campaigns give you enough time to get to where you need to go to accomplish the objectives you need to accomplish. Like, you're really not running against the clock, per se. So I, I just don't think it's going to be as, as helpful as you, as you may think. Um, stamina could be helpful. However, the further you get into the game, the, the less likely you're going to run into stamina issues with your, your units. So basically, long story short, I just don't see attacker being really a helpful stat. I kind of see it along the same lines as like your cavalry stat, where it's just like, I can see circumstances perhaps where it's going to be useful, but just the other two just drastically outweigh the benefit of this one, that it's just not worth it. Same with attacker, right? I think the defender and the leader traits are going to be far more advantageous to you than the, the the attacker trait, and so you just really probably shouldn't be considering this one at all. It should be between defender and leader, which leader is is pretty helpful because um, this this increased aura, this twenty percent aura, that that circular ring that goes around the the core commander, is very very helpful. Um, you will find as you play this game that it can be really hard to get your core commander in the right spot to maximize his effects on the brigades around him, right? Because you just don't have a big enough circle. Well, this 20% actually makes a big difference. I mean, you'll see a considerable difference in the ring. You wouldn't think 20% would make that big of a difference, but it does. Um, the, cir the circle is considerably larger with the 20%. Um, <clears throat> Moreover, uh, let's see here. What was the other thing I want to talk to you? The, mor the morale resistance is very important. Um, it increases the likelihood that your troops won't route and run. Um, so it boosts the morale of the particular units nearby to you. Uh, and then also, too, it's really helpful if you're kind of a, in the position where you're hold at all costs. Um, between the increase in the ring size along with the morale resistance increase, it's going to make it really hard for um, the enemy to punch through. So, especially in a situation where you're trying to hold at all costs until you can bring reinforcements up, it can be really helpful. Um, anything else I want to add to that? I I probably say probably in summation, kind of the way the way I do this. Uh, let me select him. Get the three star up here. What I would probably say you want to do is you want to have one core commander with um, one core commander with I kind of just screwed around just grabbing different ones with leader and then the other two with defender I think it's the best way to do it so then you have one core commander with a very large ring around him and is really good at hold at all costs and so you can kind of specialize him right he's going to be the one that's going to be the one that's going to hold at all costs um, the hard, hardest to break and then you have the other two that are great for kind of all purpose you know whether it's defend, attack, um, tip of the spear type situations, you have them as defenders, uh, and I think that's the, the kind of way to go. Um, so in summation for core commanders, I think you go with the the, the, the trainer trait. Um, at least I would. I go with the trainer trait. The next one over, I would do the you know infantry artillery, kind of your pick, and then two of the three have defender, and the other one have um, the leader the leader trait, and do it that way. Um, and then obviously have them all be three-star, three, three star if, if possible. Okay, so in summation for this video, just really quick. Division and brigade commanders do not provide officer, you know, sp trait-specific things. Um, these are going to be specific to the brigades. But what they do contribute is command points and efficiency. All right, and the command points can be dictated by the rank of the brigade commander, uh, as well as half of the command points from the division commander. And... The way to eyeball it is 2,500 troop brigade should be led by a one star. A 2,000 man brigade should be led by a colonel. A 1,500 man brigade should be led by a major or a lieutenant colonel. 
And then captains put them in charge of artillery batteries or smaller regiments because what you want to do is they're really cheap in the barracks so you can hire them and then train them up um, so you're not spending a buku about a, amount of money on one stars which are really expensive as you can see uh, and then you can't hire you can't actually hire two stars so you will need to train them up and so that means you're going to want to protect them and make them at a minimum div division commanders because of the brigade commanders like up here they're more likely to get shot and killed or wounded that being said the higher the ranking officer in a brigade, the quicker that that brigade is going to gain experience and get stars next to them. And so like up here, it would make sense, right, to have like maybe at most a one star. And then if you really want to rank up Warren really fast, you put a two star in charge. And that will increase the experience level for that particular brigade much quicker. However, I think the better way to do it is to have one stars, colonels, lieutenant colonels, and majors running your brigades having one stars and two stars running your divisions, and then having two stars and three stars running your cores, and that seems to be the best way to do it. Uh, finally, just remember that in the barracks, every campaign season as the campaigns reset, the number of colonels and lieutenant colonels in your academies will reset, and so therefore I recommend when you're replacing officers, like say here we have two guys that are wounded, instead of going into our reserve pool and, re and replacing these two guys with two stars or with the major, you go in and replace them with colonels and lieutenant colonels if you have the money to do so because these will replace themselves every campaign unlike the one stars which won't replace themselves and they're harder to, to come by. Alright so hopefully that really helped um, give you a really good overview of what officers do, how the chain of command works, what corps commanders do, all that sort of thing. Um, and if you're interested in terms of how to actually structure your brigades, your batteries and so forth. Um, I'll have another video on that, um, kind of going into that in detail. As always, if you um, if I missed something or you have something to add or if you have additional questions, please leave them in the comment section. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Um, the reason being is that liking and liking the video as well as subscribing to the channel increases the likelihood that people are going to find this channel, find this video, discover the game perhaps, uh, or maybe come back to the game because they got frustrated. Uh, and then read your comments and learn more things and uh, get more people to play the game. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it.